you. Amen. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 34. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 34. Thank you, Sister Herring, all the musicians and singers. Great job today. I like what I feel. I like the energy in the atmosphere. I like worshipers that come to church. I like to be around praisers. I like to be around people that didn't come to criticize but came to be a part of what God is doing. Amen. Mark 5, 25, very popular story. I'm sure you know it. A certain woman which had an issue, somebody say an issue, of blood 12 years, had suffered many things of many physicians, spent all she had, was nothing better, but rather grew worse when she heard of Jesus. She came in the press behind touched his garment, for she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. I want to preach from the assignment this morning, you've got issues. Would you just turn to your neighbor and just be so, so kindly, just tell them you, you've got issues. It's better than saying, like, I think I'm pregnant or something, but. Everybody in this building's got them. If someone turned and said, I don't have any, get away from them, they might get killed before church is over. Amen. Lord, have your way in this room. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Speak to everybody's heart, everybody's situation, and move as only you can do in Jesus' name. And somebody said amen. amen. And the words you're all waiting for, you may be seated if you're going to help me preach. Everybody has issues. No matter how perfect they seem, everybody has issues, whether they're internal or external, visible or invisible or both. Everybody has things they're trying to conquer in their life. If your issues are emotional, I promise you that most of us know about it because emotional issues are quite visible. You've heard the statement, I wear my emotions on my sleeves. In other words, it's very visible to people that you're crazy. I'm just being nice with that, but we all know it. We love you, but we know. (laughs) And then some people have mental issues, and those issues are more internal. You don't just know someone has mental uh, issues by just meeting them. Sometimes that can hide on the inside. Physical issues can be inwardly or outwardly. They can be private or public. If the pain is visible and people can see, like we preached about when Wednesday night, you limping, Jacob, we know that there is an issue. But there are a lot of people that can hold the pain on the inside, and you never have any idea that there's an issue going on in their life. Mental issues, spiritual issues can be inward or outward, staring but spiraling, silent outwardly but screaming inwardly. I want to preach to some people that look fine on the outside, but you're not faking pastor out. Inward issues can be so real and so strong, and you don't want to talk about it like the lady here in our story. She's got an inward issue. It hurts too much. The issue is embarrassing. The issue is not something I want to bring up in conversation, and I come to church, and I hide my issue. Can I preach about that for a moment? I want everyone to think I'm okay. So I fake it with you, and I fake it with God, and I act like everything's fine. 
but on the inside, nothing is fine. I need help. I need an answer. I need deliverance. And some of you aren't clapping, but you've got just as many issues as everybody on their feet, and you know I'm telling the truth. Well, I've arrived. No, you have not arrived. We are still in North Dallas. We are not in heaven. She had an issue of blood. If you're wondering what that means, she had a flowing blood problem, weaker and weaker each day. Every day, the blood was continually flowing, and the Bible said she had this issue 12 years. Not 12 seconds, not 12 minutes, not 12 seconds. Days, but 12 years. I want to reach what the Lord told me. You know it's an issue when it doesn't go away just because you change locations. Just because you change churches. Just because you change relationships, just because you change positions, if it's an issue, it's going to follow you, I promise you. You can blame everybody in the world, but... It's your issue. Somebody shout, I've got issues. <laughs> Twelve years it doesn't go away it's because i move or i go here and i hope that this church is better than my last church because you know all the and i always know when someone shows up with an issue when the first words out of their mouth are about the 43 churches that they've been to and how they're all going to hell it lets me know that the 43 churches are probably not the issue you're the issue and i love you It's an issue. No one can be your friend. You can't trust anyone. Oh, this is going to be real quiet. People have to walk on eggshells around you. Some people should come with a warning label. Caution. I do not play well with others. Caution. I'm crazy. Caution. It's quiet, but I'm telling the truth. Some people seem fine outwardly. Everybody's got problems. She's got this issue, and it's there year after year after year. How many years will you blame everybody but you? Well, I am this way because of this, and some people, I understand that, but when you live your whole life like that, you're wanting to be like that because you can't be around this atmosphere where there's deliverance and freedom and walk out bound unless you want to be bound. Unless you want to have an attitude, unless you want to have a spirit, you can be free. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You can be delivered from drugs. You can be delivered from alcohol. You can be set free. She said, I just have this problem. And the Bible said she went to several, many physicians. It didn't say that she suffered because of her issue. It said she suffered many things from the physicians. I was doing okay with my issue until I told people about my issue and people made it worse. if you want. It's all right. I can feel when you get mad. <laughs> Suffering while people are experimenting. Let me just stop and say something right here. You can, I know this is going to go over like a lead balloon, but you cannot truly tell someone, I know what you're going through. Even if you went through the exact same thing, they lost a certain loved one, you lost that exact same loved one in your family. You haven't had the same attacks in your mind that they have. You haven't got the same stories they've got. You haven't got the same pain. I wish you, I know, I'm sorry. You don't have the same issues they have. Oh, I know what you, you may know something. 
Why don't you be honest? I don't know what you're going through, but I'm here for you. Stop being a spiritual know-it-all. People trying to help her. People trying to figure it out. And the Bible said she spent all that she had. I love this part. Can I preach to some people who are spent? Hmm. I went for broke and ended up broke and broken. I want to talk to the lost at all people. Some of you aren't even, you, you've never lost at all, so you don't you didn't even hear that part. You've always had it pretty good. But there are some people that don't trust now because they trusted others before. And it ended up spending all that trust and nothing got better. I want to speak to the people that went all out and lost everything. And here you are staggering in on a Sunday morning and you don't relate to everybody. Anybody can sit there with their folded arms and their bad attitude and be a non-worshipper. But if you go to hell and back, you will know. You will know. Can I get some real people? I don't have anything, but I survived somehow. I've lost everything, but God's still good. I don't have any money, but he's still everything that I need. He's the answer to my problem. Somebody clap your hands to a God that sits high but looks low. And was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. <laughs> it's getting worse. She's gone to everybody, spent all the money she had, and now I'm close to shutting down. I've tried it all, and there's nothing out there, and there's no one out there that can make it better. That's why you're in here this morning. I'd like, to, I don't know if... Some of you, you, you're giving me the nice holy stare here. That's sweet. But I, I, I like the people that can testify, I've tried that. That didn't help. Has anyone ever drank alcohol and would admit that alcohol cannot do for you what Jesus can do? Just be real. I don't, you want to be fake, go to a conference. But if you want to be real, come here. Anyone ever been high on drugs, but you can tell me that there's still no high like the most high God who can do more for you in one service? Some of you aren't getting with me because I haven't found your addiction yet. Should I stop? You sweet little Pentecostals, I've never smoked, I've never drank, but that pornography issue might be something you can tell... I wish you would sit there. I promise you in the Holy Ghost that God can deliver you from anything. I've never done anything wrong, but you're a gossiper and you're a liar and you're an accuser. You need to admit that God is the only thing that can help you and save you and redeem you. It just gets worse. People cannot fix you. Get that through our head. People cannot fix my issues. But when she heard of Jesus, she has been bleeding for 12 years, but somehow said, I'm going to get to where. He is. I like it when you come in super weak, but you know I'm not here to impress anybody or anything. I've been through hell this week. I just want to get to I don't care who's preaching. I don't care who's singing. I don't care what people think about me. I came uh, shut up, to get to Jesus. I came to see Jesus. I need Jesus. Is there anybody that will admit I need Jesus? I didn't come to see pastor. I came to see Jesus. 
He's the answer to the problem. Somebody told her about Jesus. I want to meet the unsung hero that we've never heard about that told her. Jesus can heal the blind. He can raise the dead. He can fix paralyzed limbs. He can open deaf ears. He can cure cancer. He can save your marriage. He can reach your backslidden child. I want to have a church full of people that are not ashamed to say, I can't help you, but I know someone that can heal you. I know someone that can rescue you. I know someone that can deliver you from your pain. I'm afraid to witness they might not come. If it's bad enough, they will come. Don't hold your testimony hostage. If God's filled you with the Holy Ghost, tell everybody about it. If he's washed away your sin, tell everybody about it. There's nothing to be ashamed of. People need Jesus. If I but touch his clothes... This tells me she's not coming to make a scene. She's not coming to stop the parade. She's not coming to say, look at me. She's coming, hoping I, he just gets close enough to me that I can just. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'm not, her motive isn't wrong. Some people go to church. Are you ready for this? I know it's going to shock some of you. Some people go to church for attention. What can I do to get attention? This is going to go over really bad. This is just 20 years of evangelizing boiled up in the pastor right now. But I'm going to say something that I saw for 20 years. When you are not a loud worshiper when everyone else is, but then you break out into tongues when no one else is, you came for attention. You can't praise him when everyone else is praising him, but then when everything dies down, every, you get it. That's not praising. Oh, it's quiet. I'm sorry. I hope you praise him when no one else is, but I hope you also can praise him when everyone else is. There's nothing wrong with giving God glory when no one's looking at you. That was for free. That's not in my notes. Forgive me, Lord. I'll delete. Just came to touch Jesus. Said she said within herself, Ovi, that she came to touch. I just, if I touch him, I shall be whole. In the Greek, it says she said to herself over and over and over, If I touch him, I'm whole. 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 Watch this. Are you ready for this? You can have inner peril and inner faith at the same time. You can have pain and prophecy flowing through you. Mm at the same time I'm bleeding but I'm believing oh you can be hurting and lay your hands on someone and watch God heal them you can minister oh I know you can prophesy to someone that God's going to bless their finances when you're as broke as a joke because ministry is not tied up with favor ministry is even though I'm bleeding I believe God can use me and the prophetic can flow through me like the pain is flowing through me and one touch of the hem of his garment And the blood stopped flowing. This is why I praise him. Because the one who stopped her bleeding was about to start bleeding for her. He didn't just stop my blood. He shed his blood for me. You don't even know why some people worship him. It's not that he healed me. It's that he saved me after he healed me. It's that he washed my sins away. He protected my family. He shed his blood on Calvary for my sins. Oh. 
watch it. What she went to, wait, whoa. What physicians tried to purposely do and failed for 12 years, he accidentally did by just being near her. This is why we go to church. Because when I get into his presence, accidental miracles can happen. Yeah, I don't have to wait for the preacher. I can be healed in the song service. I can be healed in the greeting. I can be healed during Sunday school. I can get the Holy Ghost while he's preaching. Why? Because he's in the room. And if he's in the room and he walks by me, anything, is ha anything can happen. Somebody ought to reach out and touch the, the Lord as he passes you by. <laughs> Who touched my clothes? That's what he said. Who touched my clothes? He knew who touched him. I can prove it. So he looked around to see her that had done this thing. You think it was good? He knows who touched him. And the disciples said, Lord, there's a big crowd thronging you, and you're asking who touched me. People are bumping into people. There's a difference in thronging him and touching him. Oh, it's going to get quiet. There's a difference in being at church and getting involved when you're at church. There's a difference in being near Jesus and reaching for Jesus on purpose. He knows exactly who touched. So why did he ask who touched me? This is what I was asking him last night. Me and him were talking. And I said, well, if you knew who touched you, then why would you ask that? Because you, you already know the answer. This is driving me crazy. We need to have this out. I need to know this now. And he said, because the issue is never the issue. And I said, well, what does that mean? When he said who touched me, her response revealed another issue. It said she was fearing and trembling. And I said, oh, so she's got more than one issue. He said, yes, she's got a physical issue and a spirit of fear on her too. Oh, it's going to preach. <laughs> because what person is afraid of a God that just healed her. What person prepares to apologize for her faith after God just healed her? This is revealing she's been mistreated before. Who touched me? It's me. He's calling me out. He's going to embarrass me. I just wanted to get a miracle. I just wanted to sneak in to church and just feel God's presence one more time. I just wanted to sneak in there, blend in, and just get a little breakthrough, and I go back home. And I just wanted to sneak in and just feel God one more time. And, and now I feel him calling me out <sighs> because there's another issue that you won't get over, and I'm going to find it this morning. And I have been dealing in this church with a spirit of fear that's coming in so many people, and I am straight up sick of it. I love you, but I'm sick and tired of the spirit of fear that's coming against some of you and paralyzing you and causing you to not be yourself. Okay, here we go. You feel that war? See how the shout's not as high? Because there's a demon in the room right now, and that spirit knows if they get free from fear, there's nothing in this world that they cannot do, that they cannot conquer. And I am after that thing that Jesus knows about. He knows she has physical issues, but she also has emotional trauma and torment because the Bible said fear hath torment. Oh, 
Oh, no. Was he mad at me? Was Jesus mad at me? That's what the devil tells you. God's mad at you. God's going to humiliate you. God's going to shame you. God's done with you. God's going to judge you. God's through with you. And you say, well, but he just touched me Sunday, and I felt his presence. And Yeah, but that's a setup because he is through. And so you go before a, a loving God with intimidation. God, I'm Please forgive me for everything. I'm a terrible person. I'm pathetic. I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm, I'm the worst person in the world. God, I'm sorry for everything I've done wrong. And you've been repenting for that same thing for 20 years. Oh, it's quiet. I'm not getting here. God forgave you 20 years ago that you've been baptized since then, filled with the Holy Ghost, prayed people through yourself, and you're sitting there repenting for something 20 years ago because fear's on you. My little kid does something wrong and I forgive him. My kid comes back in 15 years, Dad, 15 years ago. What? But that's exactly how we treat God. I'm so terrible. I'm so pathetic because there's a spirit talking to you about your relationship with God, how pathetic you are, and it, it gets in the way. And so you approach God not as a child of God, but as a renegade rogue prisoner who's run away and deserves to be captured again. Oh, I'm preaching it right now. And you're sitting there saying, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I'm terrible. I'm pathetic. Let me tell you something. We've all sinned. We've all messed up. We're all pathetic. That does not change the fact he's still your dad he's still your dad and he loves you in a way that you cannot understand she said it was me the bible said she told him the truth it was me stop blaming everyone own your own issue That went over like a lead balloon because it's so much easier to blame everybody for why you're crazy. But I'm telling you, if you really want freedom, stop pointing the finger at everybody and say, God, I'm a mess, but you're my dad, and I love you so much. I need you every day. It's me. I'm the one with the issue. I'm the one that broke free from the crowd. I, I'm the one that went for it. I'm the one that probably shouldn't have done it, but I'm the one that I'm the one that interrupted service and touched her. I'm the one. And he said, daughter. Before she was woman. He's letting her know they see you as woman. I see you as my child. That's why I love you, but I don't care what you think about me because you didn't die for me. You aren't my father. Only the Lord is. Daughter, thy faith hath made the whole. I want you to get this. Thy faith hath made. Past tense. You, you're, you're whole. Go in peace. Why does she need peace if it's just a physical issue? Here it is. And be whole of thy plague. I thought she was just made whole. You just said she was made whole. But you're also saying she needs to be made whole. There's two issues here, isn't there? Yes. Okay. She's whole of the physical thing. Because the word plague here in your Bible is to whip and to scourge repeatedly. Something that's attacking you, whipping you, mocking you. Don't worry. Just like I stopped your blood and I'm going to shed mine for you, 
I'm about to get in the way of the whips too. Oh, shakata mahasata lahaya. Oh, shata. This is why I love him, Brother Potter. This is why I love him. Isaiah 53 and verse 5. Isaiah 53 verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. That's why I praise him. Because he knows what's not just wrong internally. He knows what's hitting me. He knows what's mocking me. And he said no. You can praise Allah if you want, even though he's not real. You can praise Buddha if you want. You can praise anything you want. But I praise Jesus because he went to a whipping post for my shame, for my iniquity, for my pain. And then he went to a cross. That's what I'm talking about. I can't wait anymore. He's coming to me. He's passing me by. I've got to be healed. I've got to have an answer. I've got to get a miracle from God. Somebody reach out and touch the Lord as he passes you by. Behold that play. You don't understand. I know what's talking to you. I know what's mocking you. I know what's hitting you. But just wait a few more days. I'm going to go to a whipping post, and it will never hit you again. It will never mock you again. I'll get in the way. Jesus, get in the way right now of every demonic attack, of every evil spirit, of every thought of fear. Let's stand to our feet right now. That spirit of fear is not afraid of you. It's afraid of God. It's afraid of God's power. For God hath not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I said of a sound mind. Of a sound mind. Your mind belongs to God. I come against everything attacking you. In the name of Jesus, I speak deliverance from fear. The issue can be healed. Ando ramaya sondo lo 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 kondo yala la la mahata yala la ma. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. Oh, God. He loves me with a love you can't understand. He loves me with a love you cannot fathom. Who would be honest in here and say, I've got issues? Who would be honest and say, I'm not perfect? I get angry sometimes. I get mad sometimes. I overreact sometimes. I spiral sometimes. I dwell on things too long sometimes. I panic sometimes. I get anxiety sometimes. I drop the ball sometimes. I don't pray like I should sometimes. I don't read my Bible like I'm supposed to sometimes. I've got good news. I don't know what you're going through, but somebody's here that can touch that anger, that can calm that fear, that can remove that anxiety, that can heal your mind. I'm surrounded by negative people that 
complain and gossip and murmur and attack and everything's wrong in their life. I'm surrounded by negativity. Yeah, I know, but somebody's in the room that sees past all that. Yeah, I can get you through that. I can get you out of that. I love you. Come to Jesus. 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 He's the only one that can fix it. He's the only one that can change it. He's the only one that can make it better. I'd be so bold. I don't know everybody's name in here, but can I be so bold to somebody needs to hear me? If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, not in Father, Son, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, to have your sins washed away, you need to do that today. Because when you go down under the water, every sin you've ever committed, everything that's tormenting you, everything that's accusing you, everything that's lying to you is washed away by the blood of Jesus. My issue was healed by his issue. His flowing blood healed my inner problem. I want to make room in the front right here. And I want everybody that's got an issue to come up here right now. Not coming to pastor, coming to Jesus. Come on. I got him too. Come on. Come on. I love you so much. Come on. Come on up here. Come on. Come on. My faith hath made the whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Be whole of the whipping. Be whole of the scourging. Be whole of the past memories mocking you. Be whole of the past attacks. Be whole. I'm about to go to a cross and take care of all of it. <laughs> Are you ready for God to do a miracle for somebody? Are you ready for God to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost? Are you ready for God to heal somebody's body? Are you ready for God to, this girl's about to get the Holy Ghost right here. It's all over her. In the name of the Lord Jesus, there's miracles all over this room. There's miracles all over this room. Are you ready? Would you raise your hands by the authority of the Word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus, receive you the Holy Ghost, receive you a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, let there be answered prayers. Sister Adam, in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you pray with somebody right now? Would you reach? In the name of the Lord. She got it. She got the Holy Ghost. She's speaking in tongues. She's speaking in tongues. She's speaking in tongues. God strengthen Obi. name of Jesus in the name would you lay hands on somebody he's the answer to the plague behold 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 Daniel behold 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 of thy plague behold of thy plague Behold of thy plague. Behold of thy plague. Brother Show Walter, come pray with the Stutzman family, please, in your region, in the name of the Lord. Would someone lift up your voice? Would you lay hands on someone beside you? There's issues being healed in this room right now. I can't heal them, but I know someone who can heal all of them. I know someone who can take all the pain away. I know someone who can take all the pain away. I know someone, I know someone that can take the pain away. 
I know someone. Come on, guys. Let's be worshiping God. Let's be worshiping God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. He's real, and he can take all the pain away. Another one speaking in tongues. Another one filled with the Holy Ghost. God is moving right now. God is moving right now. God is moving right now. God is moving. Let the Holy Ghost come to you. Let the Holy Ghost make it whole. Let the Holy Ghost. He's the answer to all the pain. He's the, he's the peace in my storm. He's the strength when I am weary. He's, he knows the inner issue. He knows the silent issue. He knows the blame game you play. He knows... Who touched my clothes? Who touched my clothes? And he looked about to see her. I want to tell somebody, he's looking for you right now. He's looking at you right now. If you're reaching for him, he's looking for you right now. Draw nigh unto God, and God will draw nigh unto you. Reach out and touch the Lord. He'll reach back. That's how it works.
He loves you in a way you cannot understand, in a way you can never fathom. He wants to help you. Let your walls down. Let the barrier down. What are you guarding your heart from your God for? He didn't do that. You're, the devil's trying to make you put a barricade up to God when he's the only thing that can fix you. He's the only thing that can change you. He's the only one that can make it better. Let the wall down. Let the wall down. Peace, 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 peace. Hold him up. Peace, peace, peace. Turmoil, stop. Come on, Isaiah. Come on, Isaiah. You can do it. Talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Every spirit. Jesus' name.